World War II saw some of the fiercest naval encounters of the modern age. But by 1943, the role of the Allied navies was changing. Having won complete command of the seas, their jobs now were to support and supply. The war from here on would be fought on land and in the air. But the big gun battleship was about to enjoy a new lease on life. Developed to project power at sea, her huge guns had been progressively outreached by the potential of the aircraft carrier. But an amphibious assault, the means by which the coastal defenses of Germany, Italy, and Japan would now be breached, she had a job to do. And so she turned her guns on the land. This was a warship at its most fearsome, bombarding targets with repeated precision and devastating effect, visiting retribution from the sea. And in September 1945, when the war finally ended and General Douglas MacArthur needed a symbol of military power, one the conquered enemy would understand, he chose one of his battleships. In Tokyo Bay, before the eyes of the world, USS Missouri was to be the surrender platform. No instrument of war spoke so forcefully of America's power as the big gun battleship, and Missouri was the biggest to float. How the gun finally got to be greater than the ship is a story that begins with a wreck. 40 fathoms down on the floor of the Atlantic. A sea battle fought between two ironclads in 1862 became the most memorable and significant naval encounter of the U.S. Civil War. The battle was fought to a draw, but when it was over, so was the age of the wooden warship. One of the ironclads had a feature of such historical importance, it is now being reclaimed from the ocean floor. The ship had only two guns, but they were mounted inside a revolving armored shield, the world's first gun turret. The ship was John Erickson's revolutionary Monitor. Monitor was a steamship like no other. Erickson designed her as a gun platform. To present the smallest possible target, he gave her a dangerously low freeboard the distance between the ship's deck and the sea. In Monitor's case, the freeboard was a slender 13 inches. As a consequence, in a storm off Cape Hatteras in 1862, she failed to weather the high seas and went to the bottom with 16 of her crew. More than 200 feet down, Monitor lies where she sank 140 years ago. Her hull is rapidly eroding, so the rescue is a race against time. She was just right in where, about there? Just yeah. directly over the It seemed port. like right over the arm there was this, this beam of some sort of yeah. or pipe. The Monitor changed everything about the way warships were designed and warships were built forever. The concept of a compact iron vessel that was no longer relied on having to turn her vessel or turn her ship broadside to fire one way or the other uh, was wholly unique in, in the history of the world. Oh, Try five thirteen, Jill. Look 
its only shortcoming, and it was really not a shortcoming of design, was that it was only good for inland waters. It was never intended to be an ocean-going vessel, and so when it was taken out to sea, it sank, and that's why we're investigating it now. But uh, for its design purpose of inland and harbor defense, it was an excellent design, and in fact, the gun turret is still one of the mainstays of the modern warship. Erickson's turret was based on a single massive spindle, a, a, a big axle in the center of the turret, and the entire axle would be lowered slightly when the turret was in position to fire, and that would lock it into place to um, allow the guns to, uh, to have a steadier platform. John Erickson's monitor spawned many copies. The turret worked. It protected the gunners from the heat of battle. But its mechanism wasn't quite right. The enormous weight meant it took a long time to reposition. Britain, a naval gunnery officer, was working on a turret design that would prove more successful. The officer was Cowper Phipps Coles, and the only surviving example of his design is on this ship, the Huasca, at the Chilean naval base 300 miles south of Santiago. Ericsson had used a pivot to revolve his turret. Coles' inspiration came from a railroad turntable. The key to the system, quite clearly, is the ability of the turret, as we see here, to rotate, to bring the guns to bear on the target as required. And, of course, when you're not engaging the target, to bring the guns away from the target to be reloaded. You can see it here under the turret, the roller system, which Coles developed from Brunel's original suggestion, to mount the turret below the deck in a safe place so the rotating mechanism isn't in harm's way. Inside the turret, two heavy guns were mounted on slide carriages, which use a combination of friction and gravity to slow the guns up as they recoil into the loading position at the rear of the turret. Cowper Coles understood the problems of modern gun warfare and how to design for them but he had little or no idea about ship design. He shared with Ericsson a belief that a shallow freeboard, the least distance between the deck and the sea, made for the best gun platform. Possibly true, but far from practical on a rolling ship in a high sea. And his confidence in this dangerous notion would pit him against Edward Reed, the most important naval architect of the day. Reed was perhaps one of the most intelligent chief constructors that the Navy's ever had. He's a very artistic man, a novelist, a poet, and he understood the dynamics of ship design at this very difficult period for the ship designer when people were having to combine sails with steam and bring in armour, perhaps better than anyone else. In fact, there was probably no better expert on how a ship worked and what would keep a ship afloat. Reed had already begun to make his mark with the introduction of a central iron box, or battery, to protect the vitals of the ship and provide a platform for the guns. The battery enabled him to build a battleship that could deal with the high seas. Reed built a turret ship, the best one he could, Monarch. Curl said, no, 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 he could do much, much better. Reed and Curls had never seen eye to eye. Reed, the professional ship designer, simply had no time for 